Welcome to Jesus Says It Is Finished, Part 5. Today we'll be reading from pages 11 and 12. A dreadful reality. His innocent son must pay the full ransom to rescue captive souls is difficult for God to accept. It was a unanimous decision salvation demands a perfect lamb to liberate humanity. At age 30, my ministry of healing, teaching, and being an example of moral principles begins. When this mission is complete, I will die Friday, rest in the tomb on Saturday, resurrect on Sunday. To hear final instructions how to support the faithful and convert new believers, followers meet with me, the Christ, for 40 consecutive days. After my ascension, the disciples pray in the upper room to unite as one, so they may receive an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Saving our beloved believers on a fallen planet takes united effort. God suffers with me during each phase of atonement. His torment is most severe watching me suffocate under the weighty burden of sin as I hang on the cross. The descendants of Adam cannot survive the eradication of evil without the sacrificial lamb. Our redemption plan provides a constant connection with your spiritual guide, the Holy Spirit. Be cautious not to reject his quiet whispers. Your guardian angel protects you throughout life's journey. Pray to appreciate priceless, conditional blessings. Bibles were not available until we selected writers receptive to Holy Spirit inspiration. By his impressions, they penned revelations from heaven. Rabbis of the temple taught my commandments to generations. A commitment to be the priest of the home is a firstborn's honor. The family rabbi uses traditional methods of education to share Jewish history, laws, and prophecies of the Messiah. 1300 BC, the recorded word began with Moses, a historian of creation and advocate of the law. John the Revelator wrote of the end time events. Varied styles of writing convey a writer's idiom. In many languages, they write messages of salvation interpreted by the Holy Spirit, who guides through inspirations, dreams, and visions. Every sentence points to me, the uh, true author. My dual nature, Son of Man and Son of God, works with humans to teach the truth of God. Each event in the plan to save fallen humanity is precise with God's timing. Caesar Augustus, emperor of Rome, orders a census that all the world pay taxes. So begins the fulfillment of the Messiah prophecy. His command is clear. Jews must register at their place of birth. So nine months pregnant, Mary accompanies her husband to Bethlehem, my encoded birthplace. Heaven's ticking sundial says, Come, Lord Jesus, meet the world you will serve for 33 years. To conquer Satan, the tempter of earth, I live a moral, mortal life. While entering the city gates, Mother has another contraction, making Joseph more eager to find shelter. Our sense of relief changes into a sigh of disappointment. This bustling town offers little hope lodging is available. Echoing everywhere are the words, no room. 85 miles, traveling by donkey, Mary's pains and Joseph's anxiety increase. Because of her smile and repeated words, God is watching over us. A calm search continues. Finally, one kind owner of an overflowing inn provides a corner in a barn where he keeps animals. The continuous motion has stopped. Exhausted, these parents-to-be greet curious creatures with an apology for invading their space. Mary takes deep breaths between contractions that promise my soon arrival. To make room, sleepy animals move closer to the walls of this humble shelter. They watch Joseph prepare a crib using their feeding trough. He covers a soft cushion of clean straw with a traditional blanket mother made weeks earlier. Her constant vision of the baby's face helps Mary brave the childbirth experience. 
a newborn yawning with a wide stretch is unaware a barn full of critters substitute a celestial choir. With their little one safe in a nursing position, Joseph relaxes. Jesus, Emmanuel, is the name he whispers. Baby fed, mom enjoys snuggling me in a tender embrace. Because I am comfortable in a humble bed, my parents smile with relief. Mary caresses tiny fingers that made earth. She treasures an instinctive grip and loves looking into her baby's face. Delicate kisses touch my forehead. After dad says a prayer of gratitude, heavy eyelids close for a few hours. Angels marvel and umbilical cord sustains God's life for nine months. And my nourishment is mother's milk.